Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Now we want to follow up on a story we brought to you a couple of weeks back where we reported that many young adults worldwide are experiencing heart-related issues. In Sri Lanka alone, over 100 to 150 young adults uh, visit the emergency room daily with concerns over heart matters. Many scientists are pointing the finger uh, at COVID-19, but more importantly, the vaccines. After all, the uh, many coming into the emergency room are not individuals who had COVID-19, but had the jab. Joining me now to discuss more on this further is uh, Dr. Sivathasan Kumar Swami, a world-renowned cardiothoracic surgeon from the Mount Elizabeth Medical Center in Singapore. He joins me via Zoom um, from Singapore itself. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for being here. Doctor, why have there recently been lots of cardiac episodes reported from young adults, not just in Sri Lanka, but around the world? Why do you think this is? Well, myocarditis, the common, one of the things that happens is myocarditis. And it has been happening in about 10 per 100,000 population. Uh, and uh, it is often following a viral infection, any infection, like influenza and all that. But uh, those are, as I said, is uncommon, very uncommon. And uh, most patients would recover spontaneously with the breast and all that, right? So uh, now it has come to a, people are getting more aware of it because there were a few incidents of myocarditis reported after the COVID vaccinations. So that's a reason probably people are getting more aware of it and more publicity is being given to this. Indeed, uh, Dr. Certain members of the scientific community and of course the public are alluding that uh, the issues have to do with the vaccine. Your thoughts on that matter? Okay, uh, but uh, what I can talk is what's happening in Singapore because I'm more familiar with it. So, uh, as I said, myocarditis is an illness associated with the in, uh, infection, including COVID, and also can occur after vaccination. And uh, generally, it, when it occurs, it's mostly the young males between 12 to 30 years old. And the local, as in Singapore incidence uh, related myocarditis in this group is uh, 0 0.1 per 100,000 doses uh, of uh, following vaccination. Right. So as of uh, April 2023, uh, more than 17 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered in Singapore. And there were 160 reports of myocarditis or inflammation of the covering of the heart known as pericarditis linked to this vaccine. So out of 17 million, only 160 reports. Uh, and uh, of these patients, 32% of them initially had symptoms within one day of vaccination. Another 20 reported, 20% uh, reported within two days and another 24% reported within one week. So the majority of myocarditis from vaccinations are generally mild and respond to treatment, mostly rest, right? Uh, so the uh, the best data probably internationally comes from, probably from Israel. Uh, we are the Israel Ministry of Health posted the data about 121 myocarditis uh, cases occurring within 30 days of a second dose of mRNA vaccine out of 5 million uh, persons. So this is the two incidents of myocarditis. As you see, it's not common, it's uncommon. Uh, and uh, it occurs, uh, like even without COVID or related to COVID, also occurs in the community too, but yes. All right, we have to leave it at that. That was uh, Dr. Sivathasan Kumar Swami from the Mount Elizabeth Medical Center in Singapore. Thank you. Now in Australia, several vaccine makers are getting sued due to their inability to be honest about the vaccines. An Australian doctor and pharmacist is seeking an injunction from the federal court to stop Pfizer and Moderna from distributing their mRNA vac COVID-19 vaccines. The case alleges that Pfizer and Moderna were reckless and negligent for failing to apply for the appropriate license before dealing with their mRNA COVID-19 vaccine products in Australia. 
amounting to a serious criminal offence. Joining me now via Zoom from Sydney, Australia, is former attorney Julian Gillespie. Mr. Julian Gillespie is a retired lawyer and former barrister who has uh, come out of retirement to fight the legal battle against uh, these COVID-19 vaccines in Australia. Now, he strongly believes that the Australian people have not been given accurate information about these vaccines. He's also part of the team of lawyers prosecuting against Pfizer and Moderna vaccines in Australia. Well, thank you very much, sir, for being here. It is very evident that you are moving towards such legal action against these uh, companies who have raked up, uh, I think, billions or trillions of dollars around the world by selling their vaccines as the solution for COVID-19 in haste. What's the basis of your case? It's very straightforward. Thank you, uh, Mahesh. Uh, we looked at the gene technology legislation here in Australia, and that legislation is found in many countries around the world, and it's are quite identical in many other countries. And we just looked at the legal definitions for what uh, is, is deemed to be a genetically modified organism. And when we scratched the surface and understood the, the proper me method of action of the, uh, the LNPs dash mod RNA, um, <clears throat> it became clear after consultation with various uh, PhDs in molecular and cellular biology, that the legal definitions totally uh, capture uh, the the main constituents of these so-called vaccines. We don't believe they're vaccines at all, but non-vaccines. Uh, so the ramifications there are quite simple. Pfizer and Moderna uh, were required to place applications in a separate uh, government office in this country, the Office of the Gene Technology Regulator, and seek genetic GMO, what's called GMO licenses, the, the legal right to deal uh, with genetically modified organisms in Australia. And it's not the first time this has occurred. AstraZeneca, uh, they came out with their so-called COVID-19 vaccine. The method of action for AstraZeneca was very clear from the outset. They were indeed always saying that they were going to target entry into the cell nucleus in order to stimulate um, the creation of the so-called spike protein or the synthetic spike protein. And because they said they're going into the nucleus first, well, that was a, a signal that their product is a genetically modified organism. So they sought a GMO um, license and they had to undergo a stringent GMO risk assessment to see if these things posed any harm to the Australian population. They ended up receiving a GMO uh, license, and then we could subsequently go on and seek approval. Um, <clears throat> but Pfizer and Moderna failed to take a similar path and seek those licenses. A, f a failure to seek those licenses and to then deal with a product without a license amounts to a serious criminal offence in this country. And that's what we want to seek to bring them to account for. All right, let's leave it at that. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Julian Gillespie, former Australian attorney. Let's take a short break. I'll return with the closing.